Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Ron Placone and Steph Zeberato, the miserable liberal. How are you? Good, All Jimmy. Right. How are you? I'm okay. Fantastic. Look at that T-shirt Steph has. Steph, show people that T-shirt. Isn't that nice? That's a nice T-shirt. You can get those down there for great Christmas, holidays, what have you. Guess what's happening now? So as the world uh, bends over backwards or to, to accept every accusation that a woman makes uh, against a man right now, it turns out that's not happening at Fox News. <laughs> They're Fox News going against the grain. <laughs> uh, here it is. This is from the Huffington Post today. Fox News women furious over Rupert Murdoch's comments on sexual misconduct. You want to know what he said? Keep it up. He said, <laughs> yeah. he said, all those charges are all nonsense. There was a problem with our chief executive, Roger Ailes. Problem? Sort of. He said, sort of. Oh. <laughs> Over the years, isolated incidents. What does that mean, isolated incidents? Meaning they happened? <laughs> what does that mean? They happened, but they didn't all happen at once. It means there <laughs> sort of may have been a lot of them over the years, kind of, maybe. Ah, there were a lot. That's what it means. But they didn't They didn't all happen at the same time. No, they weren't all. <laughs> Isolated. He had about 40 or 50 Maybe a hundred thousand, so, uh, you know, whatever. They were isolated, though. They did. They all happened separately and individually. They didn't happen. He wasn't trying to get a blowjob in a cab and trying to whip his dick out in his office at the same time. Those are isolated, <laughs> right? Yes, okay. but two different. He's he's in one place and then in another place. He's another. not in both of them at the same time. He's not doing that. He's not doing that. No, he's he's not a shapeshifter. <laughs> Uh, as soon as we invest, this is him speaking. This is Rob, Rupert Murdoch. As soon as we investigated it, meaning Roger Ailes, as soon as we investigated Roger Ailes, he was out of the place in hours. He only he only kept him around for three decades <laughs> until he died. <laughs> he was out of there in hours. Well, three or four days. <laughs> Sort of. And there's been nothing else since. That's not even remotely close to being true. <laughs> so this is a guy, again, head of a news organization, just allowed to just make stuff up. That was, this is him talking still. He says, that was largely political because we're conservative. So now it's, oh, they're coming after us because we're conservatives. It's a political hit job. Uh, and Roger Ailes and his hamburger meat. That they paid a forty million severance fee to forty million dollars to get that problem out of the way. That was largely political because we're conservative. Now, of course, the liberals are going down the drain. NBC is in deep trouble. CBS, their stars. I mean, there are really bad cases, and people should be moved aside. There are other things which probably amount to a bit of flirting. What is he saying? <laughs> this just a jar. This is like a this is like a Sarah Palin word salad, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of is. There are other things which probably amount to a bit of flirting, and then there's things. I mean, three or four days, hours, a maybe sort of isolated. I mean, there are really bad cases, but then it's also just flirting, and uh, they should be moved aside or not. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to put up with this hostile work environment. This is a woman speaking now about this. I've had to put up with the hostile work environment for years, at meaning at Fox News. And now I'm told that it doesn't exist by a man who doesn't have to walk these halls every day. I'm hungry for justice, said one woman who was part of the network's on-air talent. Wow. So we don't know, and she doesn't want to give her identity, I take it. She says, hey, Rupert, stop with the lies or we'll go public with the truth. Do it. All yeah, do of it. it, including about the talent and executives you still employ who have harassed us and don't give a damn about workplace respect. Only money, said a woman who was previously a prominent member of Fox News on air talent. Can I say this to that woman who was previously a prominent member of Fox News on air talent? Why the fuck are you still keeping secrets for these guys? What are you waiting for? You don't work there anymore, and you don't want to tell... You're going to stop the lies, or we're going to go public? Why don't you go public with the truth right now? 
I, am I wrong to say this? This sounds like something I shouldn't probably be able to say or something, but... Well, since this well, isn't person... Isn't this about... Aren't you supposed to stick up for it? Stop this shit because it's happening to other women? Aren't, isn't that the problem? What? Am I wrong, Steph? I, I see your position 100%. I share that same position. I'm sitting here. She was previously a prominent member of Fox News on Air Talent. So you have a certain amount of uh, following. You have a responsibility, and no? And she should... I, isn't it a news network? You're a news network. You're gonna. Are keep... you supposed to be reporting on stuff that affects people, society, our culture? Here is an epidemic problem in the workplace. Certainly at Fox. <laughs> you know, I think you. Listen, I don't. How how do you not? How do you how do you not say something? So if Rupert Murdoch just stops lying publicly about this, you guys will also keep quiet about it. Well, the guys will keep quiet about it. No, no, this is I'm a woman. Wor- yeah, but you said you guys will keep quiet. I mean, about when it. I say guys, I mean uh, I'm using the to colloquial term for men and women. So, so if if Rupert Murdoch stops lying, then the women at Fox News will keep secret about this. That's what she's saying, right? And I don't. I can't. I'm not trying to make it out like you know, she's also a victim. But if you're prominent and you're going to say this much, don't you have? A, I don't. Am I wrong? Don't you have a responsibility to try to protect other women who are now at Fox News? Am I don't. So that's why I'm asking you, Steph. You're a woman. Do, it doesn't I think sh- I already concurred with that point so of view. So she yes, does. I, yeah, I already said that, that I believe that she should. Doesn't? Aren't you supposed to be reporting this stuff? I mean, I think it's really insane that nobody in, uh, in, nobody in news is breaking this story. It happened to me. Let me break this story down for you. Come on. Go out in flames on air. Really well, she, make it happen. She's she's previously a prominent member of Fox's on-air talent. So she's not even on. So that could be anybody. That could be Megyn Kelly. That could be anybody. Gretchen. Who's saying, Gretchen. It could be anybody who's saying that. And my thing is, why are you being quiet about it? I mean... And NBC does stories all the time on their. They just they just did a story uh, yesterday about uh, Matt Lauer on their own show on their own network. They did a couple stories. So why wouldn't you do? So again, there's so much weird behavior or like not cool behavior around this stuff. Like again, I don't want to victimize a victim. She's a woman who's a victim of that horrible stuff. Mm-hmm. But now she is here. She seems like that there's a lot of lies and this truth still hasn't come out about this. Well, isn't it your duty to have the truth come out about this? Right. That's what we're all saying here. So there's one little more part of this. How much will it take before you actually start caring about your female employees? This is that same woman. Is your fifty two billion dollars enough? Are we really going to clean house now? So here's someone who does give her name. Tamara Holder, a Fox News commentator who settled with the network earlier this year over a sexual assault claim, said, quote, you cannot rewrite history, Mr. Murdoch. The problem was not only with your chief executive. For example, one of your former executives trapped me in his office, pulled out his penis and shoved my head on it. That's not nonsense. That's criminal. So I would like to see one of these guys actually go to jail. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's a criminal offense, right? I mean, yeah. Wow. Ugh. Right in the can, work in like, the work. Could you just, imagine doing like, I that? Can't, no, I, no, I can't. Like, I mean, this is like, you know, you know, and all this stuff. You know, it's like I'm sure every guy's like, have I ogled people at work? Have I? Did I say things weird? That, grab their head and put it and take your dick out? Yeah, there's no ambiguity there. What? Yeah, it's pretty. Pretty, wow. in, pretty entitled. You know, like culture. culture. You know, I come from comedy clubs. So in comedy clubs, there's women working all over the place as waitresses and managers and what have you. And we're saying that, and comedians say the most vile shit as a matter of course on stage all the time. You know, Andrew Dice Clay still works in nightclubs all the time. He works at the comedy store and the imp. I've seen him all the time. And other comedians are just as gross. And, uh, you know, that's part of what we do. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? It's like, that's the... Le- so how is it okay for that environment, but not okay? I, that's the weird... I've always wondered about that. Like, if you... So I don't want to get being back on stage it. versus not, or... No, no, what like, do how, do, how is that not sexual harassment? How is that not ch- creating an environment 
of that's hostile to women who work in a comedy club. You're up there talking about, you're saying every filthy thing in the world about women's anatomy, men's anatomy, talking about uh, sex and, and having sex and oral sex and splooge. Every, you know what I mean? That's all. Right? You, you've been at comedy clubs around. You know what they talk about, right? Yeah. You've seen women standing there working, right, as they're doing that? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that happening in another work environment? Well, yeah, that's very very true. Yeah, I guess I, context is important, I guess, in this case. It's a work environment. Can you imagine that's that true. happening in another work environment? Could you imagine going into a newsroom and somebody up there talking about jerking off in the middle of the newsroom? <laughs> they just do an improv stand-up routine. Right? Do you know what I mean? I'd be like, you need to find stage I time I want to tell everybody a joke. I want to tell everybody, <laughs> hey, before you guys go to uh, lunch, I want to tell you this joke about jerking off. <laughs> but they do that at comedy clubs all the time when women are working right there. Yeah, well, that that's why those acts typically don't get to do the corporate events, or if they do, they do a much different act. But every comedian talks about shit like that somehow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, I saw Tavis Smiley just got his show yanked on PBS. Are you really supposed to use the term yank? And the, 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 um, the accusation against him was... One of the one of the and I read the article, they said that he demeaned women. He referred to someone he was going to pick up at the airport as a fuck buddy. And I'm like, that's all it takes for you to get in trouble is to call somebody a fuck buddy. Like, I'm, and I just keep thinking about the stuff that comedians do on stage. Like, it's I don't like that's not, that song's like something you almost like a Christian thing to say compared to the stuff most comedians say on on stage. Well, just I mean, uh, honestly, in my life. I have heard women refer to guys as that. As a fuck buddy. Yeah, yeah like, me like too. it's just one of those, like, I mean, we're not in an exclusive relationship and it's understood that, you know, we just, you know, meet our needs together. Right. Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard guys refer to girl. I mean, I, I guess it's like you wouldn't maybe say it directly to the person, but I mean, or maybe you do. I don't know. But I mean, if you're but fuck I've, buddies, I've heard people use it. You'd like, be able to say that to your fuck buddy. Yeah. Hey, you'd my be fuck like, buddy. Hey, so we're just fuck buddies, right? Or something like that. But Come yeah, on, I don't. Buddy. <laughs> so here she goes on. She says the culture at Fox News won't change until you publicly accept that it has been a breeding ground for sexual misconduct over the past two decades. Holder said so good for her. For coming out, saying that stuff, putting, you know, it's it's courageous. Good for you. Thanks for doing that, actually. So Carlson also replied to the comments saying, Mr. Murdoch, sexual harassment isn't flirting, nonsense, largely political, or simply isolated incidents. So I'm going to guess this is Gretchen Carlson. Mm -hmm. I'm calling on you to release all women who complained about sexual harassment at Fox News from the secrecy agreements, you forced them to sign and let the truth come out. Now, there you go. That's balls. That's coming at you with both barrels. Well, and who knows? That might answer the question that we've been posing as to, like, why aren't What prevents people, them? Oh, what prevents maybe them. that's why. Maybe oh, they so, signed something back in whatever So day. that's maybe why that woman was saying, stop lying or we're going to tell the truth because they had to sign these they secrecy. Sign. So maybe, okay, now that makes everything you know different. You actually... I just don't understand how legislation isn't in place where if you break a law. It and you you are uh, behaving criminally towards me, you're forcing my head on your penis, all bets are off. Yeah, yeah, I don't I, care what agreement yeah. I sign. You have now broken the contract of a, a safe working environment. There, I, 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 I think what they happened is that they they gave these women money. Uh, to, to to like not talk about this anymore, and part of them taking the money was they had to sign a piece of paper saying I won't talk about this anymore. So that's it wasn't like a, they signed an agreement when they started working that said you can't talk about stuff, which I'm sure they signed also. But I'm sure as part of their settlement, they have to sign another thing saying you won't talk about this. So that does make so now I'm glad we figured that out. Um, but look at Carlson coming at him. She goes, let the public decide if the be. Behavior to which women were subject, subjected to was flirting. Yeah, so she's saying, she's calling on Rupert Murdoch, good, and that's what she should do. Hey, why don't you release all those women from their confidentiality, uh, confidentiality agreements and let them tell the truth about it, and we'll see if it was really flirting. And he's not going to do that. And it's just amazing that Ra- Rupert Murdoch is still accepted in polite circles, still accept, you know, he's just the grossest of the gross, the climate denier. He's dumbing down America for money. And he's just, he's still, you know, he'll still be invited to award shows and things like that. You oh, know? yeah, yeah. Uh, 
illegally threw an election or two. Yeah. I mean, like. Yeah. Uh, Prince lies all the time about war and climate and every mm-hmm. other thing. I just don't understand also now that you know that uh, Murdoch is worth $52 billion. That's what they tell us he's worth, right? Right. Come on. Um, that you wouldn't think that there is not a, a lawyer who would say, let's go after this no industry. No kidding. It's time. You know, kidding. I really, I you know, I really am shocked that there's not an organization that's saying, "Hey, you know what? This is now a part of the reality of these professional workplaces. It seems it's at an epidemic level because we're revealing so much about it." I, I, I challenge the. I think there should be a, a case brought against Murdoch. Good for you. Do it. Go speak to your lawyer. That one woman at the end of the article says, "I believe it's um, Carlson." Uh, no, no, no. Is Holden? it? Holden? Yeah, that says, um, I'm contacting a lawyer tomorrow. I'm oh. sick of this shit. Oh, okay. Who is that? Does it say? I, it's Tamara. Oh, Holder. So, so it's that Tamara Holder. Mm-hmm. She's going to contact the lawyer, she says? It says at the conclusion of the Ross story, I'm contacting a lawyer. Oh, on Ross. Okay, I read mm-hmm. this at HuffPo. There you have it. And uh, <laughs> Rupert Murdoch. First of all, what does a guy with $52 billion still go to work for, A, and what, what, why do you still want to keep harassing women? You have $52 billion. Why do you want to keep harassing? You can't clean house. You can't create an right? environment that these assholes aren't being right? as sexually har- uh, you're harassing you're women daily? Money? You're afraid you're going to lose money? What do you, why, why would you keep this environment? Well, because he's probably a creep. Yeah, just go out and see the world at this point. You know, yeah. I mean, you're, you're not getting younger. You got fifty-two billion dollars. Yeah, try maybe try to do something good for the world. Like I don't know, try to stop wars. Mm-hmm. Try or your to, network. Yeah, stop that. That try that to, would help the world. Or or end sexual harassment. Or maybe maybe you maybe you work against this bullshit tax bill. Maybe you try to help people get health care. Maybe you try to do something nice instead of something horrible. Instead of being a virus on the planet, maybe you try to help. I don't know. I don't think so. That's not how Rupert Murdoch works. Um, what if he has like an, an Andrew Carnegie moment where he's just like, oh, man, I got like more time. But I don't have I only have so much time left on this planet and I've done a lot of really evil stuff. And then he just starts like so I guess starts doing all kinds. of good Maybe things. that'll get him uh, one level higher in hell. Yeah. Hope. Yeah. Well, that that was why Andrew Carnegie did it. Fear of hell. So I don't I don't know what Rupert Murdoch's religious beliefs are, but. Is that why Andrew Kinnear? That's why I did it. Really? He was, yeah, he was scared that when he died, he was going to go to hell. Hot. Was that? Has this been written about? Yeah, yeah. There, there's a book called "I'll See You in Hell" because for Frick, what really screwed Frick over was the Battle of Homestead. When that happened, Andrew Carnegie left town. Frick didn't, so it was basically like they were they were bringing in workers to work for cheap because they didn't want to pay you know hire for labor for the people who lived there. Frick was there when it went down. Andrew Carnegie wasn't, so Frick like that just he went nuts after that. Andrew Carnegie didn't, and then, like, later they were both old and, like, dying, and, and uh, Andrew went over to Frick's house, like, in New York City. Who's Frick? Who's this um, guy, Frick? Uh, Henry Frick. He was, he was also, like, the big investor, like, oh, in really? that area at the time. Yeah, I never heard uh, of like him. Like, in Pittsburgh, and, yeah. So Andrew Carnegie went over there, and he's like, hey, time to, you know, bury the hatchet and put all this behind us, you know, and, and I, apparently Frick just said, you know, I'll see you in hell where we're both going. So it was like, Fear of hell that made him. Oh, you know, really? The libraries and everything. It was like that he started was it. giving. He was like, I can't take the money with me, and I might go to hell if I don't do something nice. <laughs> ah, so wow. Well, there you go. That's a good story. <laughs> and in elementary school, I was taught what a great guy he was. Andrew Carnegie. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Okay. Well, um, please make sure you're still subscribed to our show if you are, because you probably aren't. They're unsubscribing people all the time. Check. Make sure you hit the subscribe and then click that bell so you get a notification when we drop videos. And if you can help support the show by being a patron or be joining our premium program through our PayPal, there's two different ways to do it. We give you extra bonus material every week, all the time. Thanks for your support.